What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us here. Today, I'm going to be doing some aluminum welding. And at the time of shooting this video, I had never ever welded aluminum. So if I could do it, you could do it. Today, we are going to do aluminum welding. So I've never actually done aluminum welding until owning these, this new Prime Weld TIG welder. Again, never done this before. So if I could do it and I could do a decent job, you guys can do it. Experts out there watching my video, feel free to uh, leave a comment below and let me know what I'm doing wrong or what I could improve because I I'm I would love the advice. Take welding for dummies, I guess. And I would be considered one of those dummies. So here's what we're gonna do. Here's our 2015 Wildcat 1000. And on trips, we've been kind of just strapping things back here and it's not very user friendly if you want to carry a few different things. So I want to build a box that kind of sits in here, straps in or bolts in somehow and has a lid and it's kind of waterproof and looks good. So it kind of fits the sizing there, not just a square box or anything. I kind of want to fit the shape of the, the bed here because it's got a couple angles and, and so I want to get a little bit creative. I don't want to spend big money on a plastic box. I want to do it myself. And I own a Prime Weld TIG welder and I've never welded aluminum. So I figured this is the perfect project to start with, right? So I picked up this uh, sheet of, uh, I, th I think the grade is 3003. It's one eighth thick aluminum. Um, obviously it's a lot bigger than I need. That's, that's a whole four by eight sheet. All right, first thing we got to do here is figure out exactly the shape we want this thing to be. So I'm gonna use cardboard to do that. And I'm gonna maybe hit it on the first try, maybe have to uh, play around with the different pieces and parts to figure out the shape, but let's do that. <laughs> So here's the general shape we came up with. Um, fits pretty nice in there. You can still kind of get a strap and hook into these little these little eyelets down in the bed so you could strap something on top of the box if you wanted. Obviously you have to picture a lid on top of this. If I cut each one of these panels out of aluminum and welded each seam, um, it'd be great practice, but that's more welding than you need to do really. Um, I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine this piece, the back piece, the bottom, and the back, this piece, um, as one, and then just, just kind of, just bend them. And then I'll combine this and this together, just, just bend it right here. And same with this side. The main reason you guys might be here are for the welder settings. So I will get to that, um, shortly here. So just, just bear with me. I want to get a few things done, and then we're going to get practicing on the TIG welding, and I'll talk about settings. So just, just bear with me. It's coming. I 
a link in the description of the video of the uh, press brake that I'm going to be using. I built it in a previous episode and I'm going to use it to do the bend right here because it only spans about 19 inches. So it'll work right here. No problem. This is less than 19 inches, but this, I have to bend it here too. And that's more than 19 inches. So that's why I actually took the plaza cutter and I cut little slits right there and there and there um, to help me make sure that bend ends up being right where I want it. Um, I'm going to do that just on the bench and I'll show you guys that. So All right, so I got that bent, but it wasn't easy. I put a two inch sl slit there, two inch slit there, and a two inch slit there. So that left me with approximately eight and a half inches there and eight and a half inches there. So 17 inches of one eighth aluminum, a total of 17 inches, not easy to bend. So if you're gonna do this uh, at home, I would put bigger slots, I guess. So this is looking pretty good in here. I think I'm ready to start welding. All right, for uh, filler metal, we're using this uh, 330 seconds or, or 2.4 millimeter aluminum rod. Comes from weldmetalsonline.com. I'll throw the coupon code right here, right here. Cause uh, you guys could get 10% off your order and this actually comes from there as well. So this is the laser, I think they call it. Basically you could use this on all metals. So that's why we like it. In terms of torch setup, pretty straightforward. This is the CK Worldwide number 17 flex head torch that comes with the, the Primeweld TIG 225X. Um, really nice piece here. And I'm using a number five cup for aluminum. Don't forget to use that code GULAY10 for 10% off your order. But, um, so this is just uh, some 1 8 uh, you know, two by four pieces. These are coupons for practicing on. The key to TIG welding, especially aluminum, practice. So that's why I'm suggesting you grab these. If you're gonna go on that website and order some, some of this stuff, and you're new to TIG welding, you might as well just go order a bunch of different coupons so that you could uh, practice your welding. I said practice 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 here's one of the, or two coupons or actually three coupons I've welded together all right guys so we're ready to talk about the actual welder settings now so this is a prime weld TIG 225x if you're not familiar with it I'll put a link in my description but I've already I've unboxed this welder my wife and I did and super impressed with it super happy with it this is a this is a really nice unit um if you're not using a prime weld, I think these settings still apply to you. So now I think we're ready to talk about the actual physical settings and I'm going to go over every knob on this, on this welder. So you're going to notice some of these are actually, uh, I've got some blue tape over them. These ones don't matter. They could be anywhere. So the first dial on here is the, uh, is TIG and stick welding. So obviously we're doing TIG welding today. So actually that's not very, there you go. Um, if we're doing aluminum, set this to AC and you see how this is grayed out, that means these two knobs come into play. If we have this to set to DC because we're doing stainless or just regular steel, then these knobs don't matter anymore. But we're doing aluminum today, so AC. AC, there you go. Next, we have our AC frequency. 
essentially the consensus is we were on this machine we want this straight up and down which is about 120 hertz that playing with this will, will could widen or narrow your arc so 120 hopefully that's that's viewable on that camera so on this machine straight up and down and then the next one would be ac balance and this has to do kind of with the cleaning action and whatnot and we're looking for 30 percent positive that i found that to be a nice setting to start with next is actually the current which is this knob right over here and and generally the rule of thumb on this for aluminum anyway from what i've read is you want approximately um for every thou that you're welding you want one amp so we're 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 welding one eighth inch aluminum today so we're going to go to 125 and just keep in mind this is the display so when you turn this knob you'll see this display change we're looking for 125 for what we're welding today but if you're going thicker or thinner you may want to adjust that so keep in mind this is full throttle on the pedal the rest of these not relevant for what we're doing today we're not doing any any upslope downslope uh, pulsing so don't have to worry about any of these you can set these anywhere that's why i have them blue next up is we're, we're using the pedal and we're not getting into anything uh too crazy you just want 2t right here so 2t the prime weld has a lot of options and that can be intimidating but i'm telling you guys it's really not that complicating there's there's a nice picture here that describes most of them and unless you're getting into very technical stuff or very advanced stuff you don't need most of the knobs so it's really not that big of a deal anyway over here we've got pre-flow so when you hit the pedal this is just gas flow to the torch and you you'll you'll kind of notice a delay sometimes depending on what you have this set to and Half a second is pretty, pretty good, I would say. Rest of these not applicable. And then now we, we've got post flow. This is the flow after you're done your weld. We don't need a whole ton here. The maximum is 15 seconds, but we definitely want more than zero. Five seconds is, I already said this, but we're not pulsing. So you want this all the way down. And then you can see if we are pulsing, that's when these knobs here come into play. And then there's a couple other ones as well. On my machine, it's shown as a straight line. Uh, I'm gonna write on my sheet here, no pulse. So some of these are obvious. Um, I want to just focus on a few of these. So let's let's pull all these off here. All right. So the main thing when it comes to aluminum welding is the AC frequency and AC balance. Those are the two factors you're, you're going to probably find the most people talk about. What actually I recommend you guys do before you just grab my settings and go weld, I think what you guys should do is grab some scrap steel or aluminum in this case and, and throw it on like 60 Hertz. So the bottom here is 40, throw down a bead or two, then go to here, throw down a couple beads and then go here or even max it out for fun, whatever. So, so try out all those different settings and you'll immediately understand what the welder's doing. The higher the frequency, the tighter your, your arc will be. It'll penetrate deeper, but be less wide. Whereas if you turn it down, you'll notice that the arc will actually be wider. Anyway, so that's that. And then do the same for, for uh, the cleaning action. You know, set it, set your machine to the minimum amount, um, run some passes, leave, leave everything else constant. And then, you know, maybe go halfway and then full bore. And that might be a little too, uh, too extreme for the cleaning action. I actually recommend, you know, maybe going, you know, like 20, 30, 50 or whatever. One of the biggest things, um, with the cleaning action is, is if you turn it up, then you're going to get less penetration because you're going to get what this really is, is the arc coming back, flowing the other way through your torch. And the higher this is, uh, you'll actually notice you, you, your uh, your tungsten will ball up. So I might even run less than 30. If I'm getting a, a decent weld, I might even come down to, you know, 20-ish percent. We'll see. But anyway, um, those, those baseline settings, I, I had some good success. The ones that I just went through, I had some good success with uh, my practice pieces. So that's, those are going to be my starting points for my start settings for when I start this. And if I have to tweak anything, I will let you guys know. All right. Always clean everything. So, uh, so these edges, all these edges that I'm going to be welding on these pieces, I'm going to scuff them up with like a Scotch Brite type pad. 
and then clean it with acetone. A lot of guys will even do scotch brite and, and clean off their, their welding rods, the, the filler materials. Very, very important. Some guys will say to use like a stainless steel brush and only use it on your aluminum. The goal here was to absolutely get this joint as tight as I possibly can to, to give me my best chance at having a nice weld. So due to some of these gaps, like right here, the way, uh, this is just one pass with the plasma cutter than a bend. So, I mean, there's no way to get this gap any tighter, really. Um, so I do have small gaps and stuff. And what I'm finding, and you can see here, that turned out really nice. Um, I'm finding that turning down the AC frequency has been uh, helping me here. So now I'm down to, I went from 120, which I recommended earlier. I am now down to about 80. So... 80 hertz um, seems to be working good for these outside joints. When I was doing, you know, uh, passes like fillet welds and, and just surface passes on those coupons, 120 seemed to work really well. happy with how this is turning up uh this is the bottom so none of these welds are visible these ones back here i'm definitely going to sand out because they're ugly and they kind of seem out of place but these ones i'll probably just leave them as is in terms of settings i've actually earlier i talked about going down to 80 hertz i am i was welding there at 80 hertz for a little while i was at about 100 hertz So we're done welding the bottom part and quite happy how it turned out actually fits really nice in here looks awesome um, ended up playing around with my AC frequency a little bit so now we got to build the lid and we're basically going to follow the exact same process for the lid as we did to build the bottom and I'm not going to bore you guys with that all that video footage again because it's just going to look extremely repetitive and I think this video is already long enough so ta-da just like that Some really nice welds on here, some not so nice welds, like right here, kind of got a little bit uh, messy. So that's the whole point of uh, practicing, I suppose. Take on a project like this, give it your best shot. If it's not pretty, you could, I'm gonna probably end up sending this anyway, not only because I have an ugly weld, but because the welds are inconsistent. I have bends in some spots and welds in other spots, and I think it would just look cleaner if I just smooth this all out. So now I need to mount the box into the bed. I got some hardware that I'm gonna use for that. Some rib nuts and some, some sealed washers. Gonna add a hinge to my lid. Gonna add a seal to the lid. And I found these cheap hood latches from, uh, from Amazon that I'm gonna use to hold the lid closed. And I don't think I'm gonna bore you guys with the installation of all the hardware and the seal and all that kind of stuff. I think we're just gonna skip ahead to the finished product right now. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna polish this thing up and leave it in aluminum or paint it black or whatever. Very happy with how this thing turned out. These little push button uh, things work out nice. I made some mounts here for these uh, Amazon uh, hood pins. Apply a little pressure, lid's shut. There's, there's a seal around the inside here that uh, I put in there, so that should work very well. Just like that. Give me a thumbs up on the video, click the subscribe button. We got a lot more stuff coming with the TIG welder as well as the Wildcat, as well as, uh, I don't know if you can see it in the background, 
We're gonna move into the big shop eventually and do some cool stuff in there. So make sure you click that subscribe button and uh, see you next time.